If there was an NFT that you could get that you couldn't flip, that you couldn't sell, would you mint it? Would you move into that project? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Soulbound tokens or SBTs and where I think they actually have a place in the current environment of the NFT space uh, as it is and how I think you can actually improve on the user experience and community building uh, that we kind of currently know and operate in. Now, I'm gonna to touch on SBTs, what they are, but this isn't going to be a deep dive into SBTs themselves, but it's going to be a dive into the use case and where I think these can actually kind of go longer term. So simply put, a soulbound token or an SBT is a non-transferable NFT. It's essentially like a forever NFT. Now look, some of the use cases for these SBTs can be a digital identity, it could be achievement badges, essentially something like a driver's license, something like schooling, or something like a credit score in a decentralized manner. Now here is what Vitalik has said about SBTs. If you have on-chain transferable things, right, then on-chain transferable things are going to like basically just get transferred to the highest bidder. That's why I think credentials have to be non-transferable if uh, we want credentials to actually represent properties of a person. So yes, the co-founder of Ethereum Vitalik is bullish on Soulbound Tokens. He co-published a paper on Soulbound Tokens. It's very long, very detailed, but it breaks down what they are and use cases that they've got for SBTs. So right now I can hear you saying, yeah, Nate, but how can I use this to kind of make those flips, make those sweet, juicy, juicy gains? Well, it's not about just the flipping of the NFT that I see these being a good use case for. It's the ecosystem around that use case. When you have a look at something like Gangster All-Star, they have actually created a Soulbound token that is used to unlock their community. It's almost like the key to get into the community. An extension of this can be that first movers, first adopters can actually receive uh, benefits in terms of achievement badges, and this can then move forward so that they can then be the ones that are rewarded in future airdrops, future things later on. So this is where it starts to get exciting because it means that those first movers, those first adopters can actually receive a benefit on a project, which means that any airdrops or free liquid that they can get later on down the line, they can then profit from later because they can prove that they were there with a soul bound token. Now, I also wanna to touch on Sharks Entertainment. Now, the reason that I wanna to touch on Sharks Entertainment is they've got an all-in-one soulbound solution and I've been spending a few days going back and forth with them speaking about soulbound tokens understanding about soulbound tokens and the mechanics of how it works because currently it is a very new concept and there isn't the infrastructure built around it and what these guys are doing is they're actually wanting to be building out their nft project but developing the soulbound tokens and the ecosystem around it now what they've done is they actually have put together a pdf and this is for education purposes for me and for other people that are interested in soulbound tokens breaking it down and explaining it with some key features pulled out now they have built the ERC 4973 soul container the idea is they have the soul container which um, essentially stores the soulbound tokens and then you have multiple tokens that can be created by anyone else to then be put into that container. Now, the reason that they have this soul container separate from just the soulbound tokens uh, is so that you can then actually transfer the soul container later, just in case you lose the uh, private keys to that wallet. So what you can see here is that the NFT can be created and transferred, but it is non-transferable or untradable once it hits your wallet from the uh, issuer of that smart contract. Now, there is a social recovery feature Feature, which is the ability to uh, have guardian over that soul container so you can then transfer it to another one if you lose that private keys and to break this down you can see down here your guardian submits a renewal request for your lost soul ID he or she now serves as both your requester and this recovery's first approver. So what this means is it means they've built in a fail safe. So if you do lose your private keys, you can have a guardian transfer that out to another wallet. Now here is a little diagram and explainer of what you can do. You can have an NFT, so an ER, C721 as a badge, and this can attach to your soul ID, but you can also have um, an ERC5114 soul badge, which can then attach to the soul ID as well. And you can see the way that it kind of goes back to the main soul ID, which is the ERC5114. 
4973 Soul Container. Now, the reason that I'm kind of diving into this and bringing this up is the fact that this team isn't just creating this to keep it gated. They actually have everything up on GitHub because what they want to be doing is they want to actually let other communities, other projects, other people be able to use this. This project, Sharks Entertainment, they're not building this as a way to just kind of gate it and run up some money on a mint. What they're doing is they want to actually build uh, an ecosystem. Just like with Azuki and the 721A gas efficient contract, Sharks Entertainment, what they want to do is they actually want to be able to create something that can then go into the public domain. They want projects to use this, use this code to actually start to create interesting features and actually play around with it. Now, I know that this sounds very shilly of Sharks Entertainment, but the fact is right now, SBTs and Soulbound tokens are very new and there isn't the infrastructure built around it. This is a project and a team that is trying to solve that problem and actually kind of add to the ecosystem. And I think this is a very interesting play because the fact that you have the founder of Ethereum Vitalik bullish on soulbound tokens and the fact that there are other projects that are respected in the space such as gangster all-stars playing around with soulbound tokens it shows you that there is a need for this space to move forward now what i want to do now is break down where i think this can actually play out in the longer term and what the use cases for soulbound tokens are where i think they will be adopted into projects in the future is they can go to those first movers and those first adopters. So the first 100, 500, 1,000 people within a community will be able to get a soulbound token showing that they were there first, that they were there. What this means is it means that we're not relying on a Discord role. We're not relying on sort of a screenshot saying, hey, you were there first on Twitter. The idea is we have an on-chain verification which shows you the people that were there first, those first supporters. This also means that it can't just be sold later on if the project is hyped up, but you're actually going to be rewarding those people that are there first. Because these can't be sold or transferred, you're not going to have to worry about someone getting hacked and someone losing um, that kind of NFT that can get those airdrops later on. The idea that those first movers and adopters can get the early access, they can get those airdrops, they can get Get the free liquidity that comes with all of these uh, aspects of an ecosystem because it is tied to them. And with the social recovery features, the idea that they can be rewarded in the first place because you also do see on OpenSea um, very high value NFTs are sort of stolen and hacked from wallets, which means that you end up with a person being able to kind of steal some NFTs, get the free liquid from airdrops, and then kind of using that to monetize that on Onwards. And I can see soulbound tokens being a way to kind of remove that because it means that those original holders and OGs can get that. This also helps out for project to actually see who actually holds the NFT um, that they can kind of buy, sell and trade, but who actually holds the soulbound token as well. When you have those two, you can then get the next drop, which can then build a stronger sense of community. So the reason that I'm excited on soulbound tokens isn't necessarily the fact that you won't be able to sell the NFT to make a profit, but it just proves the fact that you were there First, it proves the fact that you were engaging. It proves the fact that you met that person. It can act as a way to show that you are engaged within that community and be rewarded for that engagement because all of the engagement metrics that we have right now are really based uh, in a centralized network when it comes down to Discord, when it comes to Twitter, when it comes to these other social networks and social platforms. And this is a decentralized on-chain way of showing those true original community members that are there. Now look, to get a little bit shilly right now, if you believe in Soulbound tokens and you like what um, they do, the idea is you could then kind of hedge your bet with a project like Sharks Entertainment because they actually are building out the Soulbound token ecosystem. And the future play here could be that if they are making good moves in the space, all it takes is for someone that isn't in the NFT space, but in the kind of crypto space, someone like Vitalik, someone high up within the um, ETH ecosystem can see what Sharks Entertainment is doing, um, kind of co-sign what they've actually got going on something like GitHub, and then be like, hey, this is what 
we think is the uh, sort of standard and the metric moving forward, which then goes back and holds validity to something like Sharks Entertainment. Now, this isn't saying, hey, go in, ape and do this because it's going to blow up, but you need to have a look at what the team is doing. And jumping into something like Sharks Entertainment isn't just about buying the NFT, but it's also buying the team. And if the team are able to build out some very cool tech when it comes to SPTs and soulbound tokens, this may be a hedge that you would like to kind of play in. Now, I'm going to have links below for all of this. I highly suggest jumping in and exploring Soulbound tokens and what they can actually do and how they can play around because I feel like we are in the early stage of Soulbound tokens and what can happen is stacking up some of these from different projects may put you in a better position later on because I can see this being another extension of the free mint meta. I can see this being where projects will hand out a thousand soulbound tokens that are for free to mint that you can then mint that then become the whitelist access that then become the airdrop access. This is what I can see happening and where I can see this moving. And I think that getting up to speed and understanding how this works can put you in a better situation later on. So hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please consider hitting up that subscribe button and while you're down there, also hit up the like button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.